Hello, and welcome to our exploration of this lovely item, the latest to come out of the Uncle Eddie workshops, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's our reproduction of a 1930s 35mm movie camera. Now, there are two gentlemen, uh, three gentlemen, actually, I would like to thank uh, for inspiration and guidance on this. First of all, and most importantly, I guess, would be Mr. Richard Bennett of Cinema Gear at cinemagear.com. Uh, he is a uh, purveyor and repairer and restorer of classic Hollywood movie cameras. And uh, he was kind enough to lend me his time and allow me into his shop in order to actually get my hands on an original Mitchell camera, which was invaluable in, in getting measurements and uh, a good close-up look at what I was about to try to recreate. The other gentleman I'd like to thank I've never met. His name is Sam Dodge. He is a collector of these classic cameras. And uh, if you go to YouTube, uh, Sam Dodge, put in Mitchell number five, and you will see Sam Dodge give you a run-through, close-up look at the fifth Mitchell camera ever made, which was actually owned by Charlie Chaplin and Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford for their United Artists uh, early, early uh, studio. And it's a thorough look at the camera, which gave me great insight to how it should look. Um, now, of course, this is not a bolt-for-bolt -bolt recreation. You couldn't possibly do that. But this is just, and it's not built to deceive either. Uh, I just want people to look at it and go, hey, that's an old camera. Uh, now, those that know what goes into the Mitchell camera will probably take a second look as uh, it uh, conforms quite well to the, the basic form factor and in many of, the, of the, uh, the details. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a look at this. It is not a Mitchell camera. It is a mythical camera. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, from the mythical camera company, this is the mythical camera FC number one. Now, FC is a determination of the type of camera that, is it, that it is. Mitchell would use SC for standard camera, NC for news camera, and of course the FC that we use is for fake camera. Now, uh, a full disclosure, ladies and gentlemen, the magazine, film magazine on the top, is an actual Mitchell film magazine because you just can't beat that classic. I'm sorry, that's just too classic. And uh, a friend of mine just had one lying around. So, got lucky on that one. So here you have it, ladies and gentlemen. It is the Mitchell FC camera, designed to be the crank-style camera, which was used uh, during silent films. And uh, the camera operator would, of course, uh, operate the, the crank and it would bring the motor up to speed, and uh, that is how the uh, film would pass through the camera. Let us take a look at the front of the camera, ladies and gentlemen, and you will see the film, the uh, lens turret, which is this round turret here, which will rotate and uh, give you a different choice of your different choices of lenses, uh, wide uh, angle or uh, you know macro or you know whatever. Uh, and this, of course, is the film, the uh, uh, lens hood, which would sunshade, keep the sun from getting into your lens. And you could also slip in um, uh, mats, which are cutouts that let you look like you're peeping through a keyhole or looking through binoculars. So those would go into the, into the, uh, the mat box. On this side of the camera, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, the lens uh, viewfinder. Now this, ladies and gentlemen, was known as a rack-over type of camera because if you'll notice, the film going through here is now currently lined up with where the lens would be, right? Well, this is before mirrors were used in cameras to show you what you were looking at through the lens. So what the operator would have to do would be to move the entire body of the camera over so that this tube would look down the lens and then he could focus the lens, move the body of the camera back so that the film was in place and he would shoot from there. <clears throat> That's called the rack over, ladies and gentlemen. And it was uh, Mr. Richard Bennett who said, if I, if I attempt to do this, uh, it better rack over. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the mythical camera rack over. 
In order to perform this task, the first thing we do <clears throat> is we unloosen the rack over screw at the bottom. Then we turn the rack over handle here to unlock the rack over. And then we rack over the entire body of the camera into position to where that tube you were looking at is now looking down the hole of the lens. And I will show you by turning it this way that the film magazine is now out of the way, as you can see. And we are looking down the lens and out through this viewer, as you can see. All right. We'll get back to a little bit more about the viewer uh, in a moment, but I wanted to show you something. Um, <laughs> Let me, uh, let me rack it back into position. As you can see, it, the, body, the entire body racks over into position. We then, of course, turn the rack over lock, turn the rack over screw, and now it is in a position to shoot. You will see there's a knob on the back here, ladies and gentlemen. There's uh, various uh, instruments that would normally go on the back of the real camera, but I've just put the one knob on there and this is, of course, the motor activation knob. Now, how does that work? Well, <clears throat> you will see in Sam Dodge's very good uh, description of the camera that this is removable, ladies and gentlemen. And the reason you remove it is so that you can open the body of the camera like this, and you can actually get into the workings of the camera. Now, uh, if this looks like wood, it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the entire camera is made of wood. The real camera would have been made of uh, uh, aluminum, uh, forged aluminum, or, you know, uh, sculpted aluminum. And uh, if you get, come in for the close-up on, uh, on the motor, you'll see that instead of the intricate uh, gears and shutters and things, we have, of course, the hamster wheel motor and when the uh, motor button is pushed it engages as you see the Altoids uh, box clicker that <laughs> attaches that clicks along on the uh, on the hamster wheel on the inside and uh, Sam Dodges shows you that the machine that, that they built to do this is an amazingly well-oiled machine and has a very distinctive sound well, mine has a very distinctive sound as well, and it sounds, of course, like a completely unoiled machine. You kind of got to hold that in a little bit. For... There, there she goes. <laughs> so there you have the interior workings of the mythical camera. Now, I mentioned a moment ago that uh, there was one more piece that I did not build. And the piece I did not build, ladies and gentlemen, this uh, goes back on, as you can see. And of course, uh, uh, as with true, a true original classic camera, uh, we have the matching, the matching mythical camera logo with the matching uh, serial number FC1, which is also down here on the, uh, the reproduction uh, tripod. Uh, there's a third piece of equipment that comes out here, ladies and gentlemen, and goes along there. Remember I said this was before mirrors were used uh, through the lens uh, opening. Uh, well, it was a rectangular box that the cameraman would use to line up once he racked the camera, once he was looking through the camera. He'd line it up to match what he saw in what they called a parallax view. And so that piece would come out here and go there, and that would actually be what he would be looking through as he was, was shooting the film. However, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we come to the third gentleman I would like to thank today. Uh, another man that I've never met before. His name was Jerry Lewis. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, comedian Jerry Lewis. He was uh, a director as well as, a, uh, as, a, as an actor and comedian and a very innovative director indeed because it was Mr. Jerry Lewis who came up with the concept in, uh, I believe it was the early 60s, of attaching a video camera to the side of his film camera 
so that he could shoot the video and then look at it afterwards, and that's how, how he could direct himself. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was known as video assist, and uh, we have included that into the mythical uh, camera, as you can see, with the video assist, which actually shows us what we are shooting through the camera as we shoot it right there, as you can see. <laughs> Well, here's another nice mess you've gotten me into.